From the second video in the polymeric materials series, we know that polymers can either be classified as thermosets, which cross-link when processed, resulting in a permanently rigid part, or thermoplastics, which undergo a physical change when processed, resulting in a part that can be remelted and processed again. In this video, we'll take a closer look at thermoplastics, which can be further broken down into semi-crystalline and amorphous resins. Thermoplastic polymers can be categorized as semi-crystalline or amorphous. Semi-crystalline polymers possess long-range molecular order or crystalline structures, while amorphous polymers lack long-range molecular order. Semi-crystalline polymers are characterized by ordered arrangement of the polymer chains, allowing for close packing of the molecules. Intermolecular forces pull the polymer chains close together, resulting in high shrinkage. Tightly packed molecules do not allow for light to pass through the material, which is why semi-crystalline resins are optically opaque or translucent. These resins also incorporate some level of amorphous content between the crystalline regions. The traits of semi-crystalline polymers will be dependent on the degree of crystallinity. Traits include streamlined molecules with no bulky side groups, the presence of both a melting temperature and a glass transition temperature, good chemical resistance in most cases, and higher use temperature than comparable amorphous resins. Because semi-crystalline resins shrink more than amorphous resins, they tend to be more dense and require looser part tolerances. They are also generally stronger and stiffer, but less tough than amorphous resins. Examples include PET, nylon, polypropylene, polyethylene, and acetyl. Amorphous polymers are characterized by random entanglement of the individual polymer chains and, due to bulky side groups, do not allow close packing of the chains. Large spaces between polymer chains allow light to pass through easily and for chemicals to penetrate. Because of this, amorphous resins tend to be transparent and solvent sensitive. Amorphous resins can be characterized by their glass transition temperature. They do not have a melting temperature and they soften over a broad temperature range. They also exhibit lower mold shrinkage, so parts made from amorphous resins can be held to tighter tolerances. Examples include polycarbonate, acrylic, ABS, polystyrene, and PVC. In addition to the differences in the final molded part, there are also some differences between semi-crystalline and amorphous resins that are seen during processing. Semi-crystalline resins must reach their melting temperature to melt the crystalline regions before the material can flow. To achieve this efficiently in the barrel of an injection molding machine, all zones are usually set to the desired melt temperature. This is called a straight temperature profile. However, amorphous resins soften over a broad temperature range, so the feed zone is usually set cooler than the metering zone, and the temperature is gradually increased as the resin moves towards the nozzle. This is called a forward temperature profile. Pack pressure is applied after filling the mold to compensate for mold shrinkage. Amorphous resins normally shrink by 0.4 to 0.6%, whereas semi-crystalline resins normally shrink by 1.2 to 2%. For this reason, if a mold is used to make parts with an amorphous resin and then a semi-crystalline resin, there could be significant differences in the part sizes between the two materials. Both semi-crystalline and amorphous resins could benefit from being run in a warmer mold, but for different reasons. Semi-crystalline resins will achieve a higher degree of crystallinity, and therefore better performance at higher temperatures and better chemical resistance if they are run in a warmer mold. When amorphous resins are run in a warmer mold, the molecules relax more before the part solidifies, reducing the residual stress in the part. This will help maintain dimensional stability after being ejected from the mold and improve part quality when compared to parts run in cold molds. While semi-crystalline and amorphous resins are both thermoplastics, they can behave very differently. The crystalline regions in semi-crystalline resins give them superior chemical resistance, strength at elevated temperatures, and translucent or opaque appearance. The increased free volume between molecules in amorphous resins gives them improved molding tolerances, sensitivity to solvents, and a transparent appearance. 
When designing a new part, it's important to understand these differences so you can choose the right material for your application. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics you would like to see covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our new content. And if you have a specific problem you would like to discuss with one of our plastics experts, please reach out. Our contact information is in the description box below. See you in the next video.